Hello, it's another educational video from MathGuide.com. My name is Mark Karadimos. I'm a teacher. Uh, I'm going to show you today how to solve a system of equations. In this particular video, you are going to see how to use the multiplication and addition method. Sometimes it's referred to as the elimination method. All right, so it goes by many names, but these are the common two names. Um, uh, in another video, I showed how it is someone can solve a system of equations by using this thing called the addition method. Um, you'll see that this was solved by using the addition method, and we do have another video on that. You can check that out. But uh, it was this was a nice problem to be solved by the addition method because the coefficients here of the x term are opposite of each other. So we could just add these two equations together, and we would cancel the x term. So these x terms, oh, let me get into the pen mode. So these x terms would cancel the moment we would add these two equations together. All right. So that's what we're going to try to do. So this video is going to show you how to take a system of equations that is not in this nice convenient form, but we're going to get it into that convenient form. All right. So that's what this video is going to do. So I'm going to start off with two equations, uh, let's see, 2x minus 5y, so let's see, 2x, uh, let's do that in white, so 2x minus 5y uh, equals 12, and we have another one, 7x plus 3y, 7x plus 3y equals 1. All right, so you'll notice here that the coefficients of the x term are not opposite each other, but we're going to try to get those two to be opposite each other. Uh, same thing with the y terms. They're maybe opposite in sign, one's negative and one's positive, but they're not opposite in value. Um, so right now, if we were to add these two equations together, nothing would cancel, and it's not going to help us. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to target a variable. Like, for instance, I'm going to target canceling the y's. The reason why I'm going to target canceling the y's is because here it's one value is negative, the other one's positive. So it's kind of nice to, to use. So let me show you how we set it up for the addition method. So if the top number has a 5 here, we're going to use that value down here. So I'm going to put a 5 down here. And you notice here there's a 3 for the coefficient of the y term. So I'm going to put a 3 up top here. So that means I'm going to multiply everything in the top equation, multiply everything by 3. I'm basically multiplying both sides of the equation by 3. Down here, I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation. I'm taking kind of liberty with these parentheses, but I'm multiplying both sides of the equation by 5. Now, imagine doing that. If you imagine doing that multiplication, you're going to notice that specifically when I look here, I'm going to get negative 15y. When I multiply here, I'm going to get a positive 15y. So that's nice. I'm going to get opposite values. Okay, so it'll be ripe for the addition method. Uh, all right, so let's actually do that. So 3 times 2x is 6x. 3 times negative 5 is negative 15y. And we even have to multiply 3 times 12, and we'll get 36. So I multiply both sides of the equation by 3. Now down here, we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by 5. So I'm going to get 35x. I'm going to multiply 5 times 3 to get positive 15y. And then 5 times 1 is 5. All right, so if I was going to add these two equations together, which is what you should do when you use the, uh, this method, it basically if I were to continue with the ad uh, addition method, which I'm not going to show in full in this video, you could see that these y coefficients are opposites and they're going to cancel. So these would cancel, and I would have an equation with just x's in it. Okay, so if I were to add... I'm going to get 41x, and I'm going to get over here 
equals actually 41. And then I could easily solve this. And I could continue on and I can get my x value and I can get my y value using the addition method. Okay, so I'm going to back up. Don't need to see that. All right, I want to try another equation. I'm going to show you how to prepare uh, just using the uh, this method called the multiplication and addition method. So let's try another one. Negative 3x minus 2y. So negative 3x Let's try to be neat. So negative 3x minus 2y equals negative 13. Uh, let's see, we got negative 4x minus 3y equals negative 19. All right, so here we got two equations and what I'd like to do is be able to use again the addition method. Unfortunately, you could see that the coefficients are not opposite in value. As a matter of fact, they're all negative in this particular situation. As a matter of fact, everything's negative. So what I want to do is figure out, well, what what value am I going to want to target? Do I want to cancel the x's? Do I want to cancel the y's? Well, it doesn't matter, but in this particular case, I am going to find a way to cancel the x's just to be different. All right, so again, this is how it works. It's real simple. If I want to cancel the x's, I'll notice here that there's a 3 up here. Okay, so then I put a 3 down here. Here I notice that there's a, a 4. It's a negative 4, but I'm just going to put a 4 up here. All right, so I'm going to put parentheses over here. Multiply these equations. All right, so, hmm. If I multiply and I do the distributive property, I'm going to notice here I'm going to get a negative 12x. If I do the distributive property here, I'm going to get a negative 12x. Uh, that's not good enough. I need one to be the opposite of the other. Like over here, remember we had a negative 15 and a positive 15? I need the, them to be opposite. So to fix that problem, one of these has to be a negative. And it doesn't matter which one you choose, but let's say I make the top one negative. So if I do that, now again, look at how the distributive pro property here is going to pan out. Here I'm going to get a negative times a negative, which is a positive 12. Here I'm going to get a positive times a negative, that's going to be a negative 12. And that's good, because now there will be opposites of each other. Okay, so now let's actually multiply. And it'll be a little bit, a little bit clearer when you actually see the equations. So let's see, negative 4 times negative 3, that's 12x. Negative 4 times negative 2, 8y. Negative 4 times negative 13, well, you know, sometimes you got to do a little bit of work on the side. So let's see, that's 12, 52, okay? Except negative times negative, yep, I guess it's a positive 52. All right, let's see, now down here, 3 times negative 4, that's a negative 12. 3 times negative 3, that's a negative 9. Okay, and again, i got to multiply 3 times 19. Yeah, I don't have that memorized in my head. So I do 3 times 19, I get 27. That's 57. Okay, so I get a 57. And it was a positive times a negative, so it's actually a negative 57. All right. Now, I know I'm doing something correct that uh, I know it's correct because these two are opposite of each other. If I were to now add these two equations together, you could quite easily see that these x terms are going to cancel because one's opposite the other. You're going to add these. You'd get a negative 1y. And if I add these two guys together, I'm going to get a negative 5. And then I would, of course, continue this, and I would get a y value of 5 and so forth. And I would use continue using the addition method. Like I said, for this video, I'm just showing you how to prepare the equations to use the addition method later on. Okay, so that's, that's where we're at with this. All right, so I'm hoping that these two examples will show you how to prepare the equations so you then can go on and use the addition method, which should be pretty simple from this point forward. All right, so check out more of our videos from MathGuide.com. Hope you, hope you uh, can go there to the website. We have a lot of interactive quizzes, 
lessons and activities for you there. All right, take care.